What's up, legends? <laughs> What's up, legends? It's yeah. Bugs. We're we're doing a little bit of a new video format here. I am with Corey Thirteen. Corey, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, Corey Thirteen, uh, unmatched enthusiast. Got a lot of cool stuff behind me. Got a co cool poster from Origins. Yeah, I like unmatched a lot now. <laughs> Um, also, yeah, joining... Max set all that up. <laughs> <laughs> we got Rosie joining us today. I don't know if you can see her, but she messed up my entire bed before before settling in. So that's good. But baked goods. Why do we have two special guests today? Why are you wearing the same shirt? Well, we got we got a special video for you. I have been recording my team league games this season for this sole purpose. I was going to make some sort of content with them, watching them back. And I, I think I said something about this in the update video I posted two days ago. And Corey messaged me and said, hey, if you wanted to do something together, would love to would love to be a part of that. So I said, you know what? My, my brother and egg, my team league compatriot, let's do a video where we commentate my previous team league games and let's see what's happening. So... So that's what's happening right now. Corey, are you ready? Uh, yes, I'm very ready. Been excited to try some commentating. Let's go. So this might be a little janky. This is our first time doing something like this. I need to readjust the camera view. There we go. So you can see the whole, the whole screen recording that I'm sharing right now. This was from the first week of the 2024 spring sl no it's not spring summer slash spring i don't know it's like it started in may i guess that's spring i, I think it, it says spring it does okay. say spring so spring season uh my team is the happening we were playing the electro monkeys i believe this week and my yep, opponent yep. was shafat shafat yep. shafat let's Let's just go with the first one. Sh Shafa. I like that one the best. Um, we were playing this in TTS. I was Yenenga. They were Achilles. And, yeah. Uh, we're not going to use sound for this because it doesn't really matter. And I don't know if Corey would be able to hear it anyway. So we're just going to turn it all the way down. Uh, and we're just going to hit play. And we're going to see what happens. Um I will probably try skipping ahead to uh, to see where the action starts. Um, although it looks like I'm about to draw my opening hand, so uh, or we're we're doing the items now on Sanctum Sanctorum. Corey, are you familiar with the item items that are on this map? I am not familiar with a lot of the things that have to do with maps in this game currently. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well. Uh, this is one of the Marvel maps. Oh, we, we were just we we're just highlighting the items. So here, let me, let me skip back and I'll pause them over where all the items are. Uh, my opponent, I believe, have advantage. So he was choosing to go first. Uh, as Achilles in this matchup, typically you win by just aggressing the shit out of Yanenga. So that makes sense from his perspective. Uh, over in that top left corner, we have the... I cannot say that word, so I'm just going to say the pot. We got the pot of Bob <laughs> Goliath. Play a scheme from your deck as a free action. That, in this matchup, uh, there, there are three possible targets. Achilles has Spear Throw. Yanenga has uh, Master of the Hunt. And... One with one the land. land. Yeah, there's so many card names in here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yen is probably one of those decks that I might be able to name cards for. Yes. Uh, and then in the middle, we have the Astral Ring. Move each fighter up to one space. Little mini Command the Storms. And then in the bottom corner, we have Daily Bugle. Draw three cards. Put a card from your hand on the bottom of your deck. Corey, what do you think about those items? I think that there is a lot of versatility with these items. Uh, the, the moving fighters, uh, that's probably going to help... Yen a little bit, but probably Achilles a little bit more, getting Patrickles up in there. Uh, I think that Achilles will do the best with the Daily Bugle. 
he probably needs it more than Yen does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Yen needs the card draw, but can can back off a bit. I think that Achilles needs that card draw to get the aggression out of, uh, originally. Mm -hmm. And something I think I recognized pretty early was that I should never like leave Yenenga in this like top zone over here, just because if Achilles goes to the item, he can just get like the free spear throw find and use in so i pretty sure i i avoided that this whole game but uh we'll see so yeah definitely some interesting items uh in this and i believe we're going into the mulligan right now all right here let's pause it let's see let's so we, see what we got here we got skirmish shift jaws of the beast pin the prey and surprise volley Corey, what would you do with this hand here i i think i would keep I think I think that if if I know that Achilles is gonna aggress me big time, I, I want to be able to have those those good defenses like skirmish, or like the the jaws, uh, in hand, uh, and starting with a surprise volley in here is always good just in case you know he pops out the cut with a with a spear throw and kills an archer, you can uh, come back the next turn and attack him with that just to bring it right back. So I personally would keep. It also gives you something to work with with the uh, that lowly one cost right there. That lowly uh, <laughs> one value card. Mm -hmm. Archer cards early in this matchup are, I would say, decently useful, especially since um, they usually die very quickly late game, um, especially with like spear throw even being a card. So you might not usually get to like even play the cards unless you have like a way to revive them and then immediately attack with your next action or on your next turn. I do like having the surprise volley early. And I think this is actually a mulligan, like for the reason you said. It, you have good defenses, skirmish and jaws. I think those are too good to have right now. I might actually want those later in the game. Um when Achilles is hitting hard. Because, like, at the beginning, Pat usually hits either with the, the three that just does two to both or the three that can become a five. And I feel like if Yen was blocking with this hand early in the game, I would be blocking with Shift, which I might not necessarily want to do. So I might search for something like a Point Blank or a Stallion. But I want to see if I actually mulligan or keep it or not. Let's see. Let's see. In, in real time, you can see me making the, the, the decision. So I pick the yeah, stuff we'll up. See what happens. Hand. It's gonna be really funny. Got I end up keeping it. Okay. Good call there. Oh, what do you think was running through your mind, and why you kept it? Probably some of the things you said. Just like having blocks in general isn't the worst thing in the world. The archer card and the revive, and I guess I was fine with that defensive package. I didn't overvalue it like I just did. It's very interesting what, like, watching something back and seeing how it actually plays out is a lot different than what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think when I'm placing the archers, I'm trying to get them as far away from Pat as I can, uh, just because Achilles places Pat, like, as far up as he can go, basically, in a really aggressive spot. He's basically three spaces away from the closest archer, four spaces away from Yen. Um, and we're playing with the timer. Let's go. Oh, we love timers. We love timers. Keep that pressure up, you know? <laughs> yeah. Now, what do, what do you think Achilles has in hand to, to keep? He kept, right? He mulliganed, actually. He mulliganed? Okay. What, what, what would you mulligan for in Achilles' situation right here? Probably pack cards. Yen not having cancels definitely means that you can, you have a lot of control over when you kill Pat, um, especially with those self damage effects. And using the scheme turn one, I think kind of indicates that he's gonna play it a little slower. He didn't boost in to attack with Pat. He just used the scheme kind of as a pass. Um, just moved all the fighters around. Um, didn't choose to really advance his position. He just moved all of my characters over, which I find really interesting. And uh, we're, we're attacking the big man. 
oh already out here with the with the the pin to prey <laughs> i think if i were achilles i would use heal if i had it here yep just because the only thing that would beat it would be a shift and you'd only be taking one damage and it would be giving like an archer another attack so like not really the end of the world but um basically just a, a bait there making achilles get rid of a card uh i think if i'm recalling how this game plays out but i'm not going to spoil it uh tempo is like a large part of how uh this matchup plays out because neither fighter actually has card draw like early in the game because achilles doesn't yeah. have cards until uh pat ends up dying and so kind of using pin the prey there making him basically burn two cards for just like a weak little archer attack um pretty good in my opinion and he did something that i was not expecting i don't know we kind of missed it there but he discarded under Achilles helm with uh yes i did that, see that which in my mind is a little crazy because that card is amazing for making sure pat dies what are your thoughts on that Corey? I think it's amazing for that as well. However, w without cancels, because a lot of times pat cards get canceled. A lot of, there, there are, what is it? Two of them can do damage to him. Mm -hmm. A lot of times those get canceled because you know it's kind of telegraphed what Pat's going to be attacking with. So I, I think in this matchup, you're not going to really need to do the whole defend to try and kill Pat thing. I think that you're going to be able to get the damage out with him and be able to self-inflect enough. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's a terrible thing. Uh, I think it has a, a lower boost value. Or is that one of the higher boost value cards? Uh, I think both of the pack cards are boost twos. Okay. So he actually opted to well, play the card that lets him deal two damage to Pat to make the card bump from a three to a five. And he chose not to damage Pat. So those were... Those were kind of like two two clues there as to how he's gonna play with Pat in this matchup. That's that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I personally would rather just try and get the discard out of while I can, and especially while that scheme is out on the field, mm -hmm. uh, so that I can just try and aggress and push as much as I pressure as I can onto Yen. I'm going for a divide and conquer here. I'm having that archer attack Achilles while well, not in Yanenga's zone. So it is a four. Blocks with a skirmish. Which actually, if he moved Achilles there, would let him double attack Yanenga. But uh, like I said before, I'm kind of going for like a tempo-y game because Achilles only has three cards in his hand right now. And I have five. And especially like if he's not gonna like play those helms, I can pretty much know that all of the attacks I put on Achilles are like going into Achilles, uh, which is often yeah. like something you have to worry about in this matchup because you don't want to throw something big into Pat accidentally. This was a clutch block here from that archer. Uh, I used to skirmish into a handshake from Pat, meaning that the archer yep, is still but... alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tilter for sure. Not, nothing is, is worse than attacking with a four value card into a one health uh, sidekick, and that sidekick survives. <laughs> oh, well, I guess. I, oh, did the archer have two health or one yeah, health? Yeah, two. Okay. Ah. Uh, it, it, it's a little less tilting in that fashion. <laughs> well, it's still tilting nonetheless. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, that was pretty huge. Um, and because he gains an action, I think he is going to try to attack again after a maneuver. I don't know how I feel. Oh. <laughs> the archer hangs yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know in 
in uh, retrospect, if that was like a super good idea, um, especially because if that was like a double attack there, um, the archer, like I wouldn't have anything to block the second attack with, but uh, the archer's hanging on. <laughs> how do you feel about how this turn's gone so far, Corey? <laughs> that, I would say, I, personally, I think Achilles has made a few questionable decisions. I, I don't mind attacking the archer, but right there you could get Yen in a corner, at least. Archer free for some, some damage outright. I think that's something that you, you, you could get up in there with. But I think that uh, you gotta if you're gonna play the to keep Pat alive game, you gotta you gotta zone him over on top of the scheme. Yeah, you have to so that when you're ready to aggress you just boom three cards in hand you got a a garbo one in hand you just bury it to the bottom of the deck or you have something that you might want to save for later for like a lethal damage mm -hmm. situation like maybe bury a skirmish down there so that you have that versatile right at the end mm -hmm. that actually is something i didn't really consider is that if you're able to set up pat dying while Achilles is on that scheme that lets you draw three cards. That actually prevents a lot of the um, kind of like mishaps that can happen from discarding two random cards and then like maybe not having the resources in hand. But I'm doing something crazy here. I just use the, uh, the pot scheme to search my deck for a master of the hunt. So I now have All right. two actions or two more actions because it costs an action to play the scheme but playing the scheme like is the free action and then i gain so you have three actions like, total three actions left right now so it looks like there was a maneuver mm -hmm. oh we're rocking the one with the land i think i boosted with that boosting with the one with the land because i oh, want to get wow. to the other scheme <laughs> See, like, you got... If you're gonna play the Keep Pat Alive card, you have to keep him on that because that's how you keep your pressure up. Because okay. without it, where's your card draw? So I schemed for two more actions. Then I maneuvered, boosted, then used the scheme. And now I have one more action left. How do you think I'm gonna do use this? Which card, <laughs> do you remember which card you, you buried? Point blank. I think I was like, it's okay. not an attack, and it's like not super great, so we're just gonna bury it and hope for the best. All right, and I believe this was a surprise volley. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think I gained an action there. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you gained an action. Uh -huh. You're, you, you, what character brought you into this game? The Raptors. The kings of act action gang. Well, outside of uh -huh. Bruce, of course. He is the, the king of action gang. Mm -hmm. But what is it? Nine action game in the in the Raptors deck? Wild. Something like that. I think actually seven from attacks, two from schemes. But I think on this attack, because he played skirmish and would be able to move one of us away, I went for the archer instead of an attack. Uh, in action just because uh if i got an action probably would just be maneuvering and so i said you know what probably in the end another sidekick more more better than another card but... give you that that beefiness that zero loves so much one thing too is looking at his discard pile he's already played two handshakes and two skirmishes so those are a lot of potential sixes gone from later when he's angry Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's why I, I, that scheme, that that these Marvel maps always <laughs> have some sort of balance question. Uh, that that's definitely the OP scheme in this matchup. I think that whoever can camp that and use it effectively wins. So I'm attacking Achilles with a shift from the archer. And... That's always so frustrating. <laughs> what having sidekicks? That can throw out ranged fives. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and he took it. And he takes it. Mm -hmm. That's rough. Which, 
and that is that's the tempo game pressuring his hand a bunch and there is a there's a little bit of a mind game there of like is it the one that's gonna make me discard a card or is it a five and don't really know if he took it there because he didn't have any blocks he did have three cards in his hand or if he like didn't have uh, like the right block and if he was just gonna take a damage and discard a card he was fine taking the one damage because he's a bunch of health and then just discarding like a bad card but uh, he got the, the the bad end of that <laughs> that coin flip there by taking five to the face yeah I not not a fan of uh, the the keep pad alive strats I like I like aggressive big boy aggro game Achilles that that's the <laughs> way I like to play him. You use your Pat cards. You kill Pat with its own, with its own cards. Mm -hmm. and then a value game all day after that. So that was another Pat card that actually had to deal damage to Pat because that one on Battle Frenzy, the one that deals two to each fighter in the combat, is mandatory. <clears throat> I believe, and so I think this is. It's a great time to throw out a double attack because if he took that archer attack, might not have that many, that many blocks in hand. So, might be. Oh yeah, for that. take advantage of this big time. But I think I'm baiting him out actually because I ended up playing that point blank instead. Which I wish I'd played the double attack there, but I think I was afraid of. Uh, I was about to say that does. It Where's his feints? What's his feint count? <laughs> feint? He has not played any of them. Feint would be yeah. pretty bad there. Also, Helm. Because if Helm switches them, the second attack goes on Pat. Which, in this case, would actually kill Pat. Because he would take one from the yep. first attack. And then three from the next. And I'm still in that, that area where I do not want Pat to die. Because... <laughs> I'd save a lot of damage, not having yeah. Achilles be angry. I mean, especially chilling down here at this lower hand count. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're really you've been hovering at the three to four card mark outside of the uh, the scheme to scheme play. <laughs> <laughs> you're a little thunder and lightning. Mm -hmm. And like, despite not having cancels for the versatile tokens. Yen, I think, does like some of the Marvel maps that give her access to abilities that she normally wouldn't have. Like that, yes. that draw from the uh, the Daily Bugle. Yen stays up to date on her news. She stays informed. <laughs> and uh, she keeps her hand count up. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, the, the Master of the Hunt in hand. Oh, and drawing another shift with an archer still on the board. Yeah, that was pretty much just a reset turn. If Achilles was going to back off, I didn't really have the the means, I think, to go in there and attack because it probably would have required a boost. So we're just resetting. This is the calm before the storm. All three skirmishes gone for Achilles, but... No battle hardens yet. That's... That definitely can bring up some shenanigans in this matchup. Uh, that's true. That's true. Man, gotta gotta love no cancel characters. <laughs> they are fun because they have that that power boosted somewhere else in their kit, but at the same time can be a little risky. Yep, another brother in arms. I take one from the combat. <laughs> boom, boom. And I think I avoid pinging Pat, but I go in for the ping on Achilles. I think that is a smart play. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> This does give 
because he gains an action from the handshake. So he does have another action. So he could attack me because that unfortunately left me ending next to Achilles. But he instead decides to move her over, maneuver over to the plus two token, which probably a good idea to not let me sit on that. <laughs> I think that was a smart play because if, if you attack... I mean, you've got high values. If you look at your discard, like you could easily have another skirmish. You could easily have a Jaws, stuff like that. So attacking would leave you with three cards with the potential of a double attack coming back at you, especially with none being used yet. So I think that was a smart play of him backing off in that fashion. Leaving him with a low hand count there would have probably been GG. <laughs> or at least pretty close to it right there. This is a situation that I don't really like because I think I had, at the start of the turn, four cards. He started with five, uh, which means if I was going to go aggress him, I would end up with less cards in my hand, which not really the scenario I'd like to be in, so of taking another reset turn but i get another pin the prey so hopefully i can do some shenanigans with that oh yeah gotta love the shenanigans <laughs> <laughs> hope everyone at home is hydrating i know we are got yes our, got our water bottles. mine's actually empty now i Aww. need more water for my <laughs> water bottle Boy, well, but i have been hydrating this is important. And you are a homie. Yes. Homies be hydrated. <laughs> Deck counts have been even this whole game, which makes sense as neither of our characters really have draw. Although, I did use that draw scheme, which I think the math would then indicate that I have been attacking more and he has been maneuvering more if we you also use the other scheme to pull a scheme out of your deck yes so uh, you have actually been using a lot more cards than an average dan player <laughs> <laughs> but using them effectively it looks like Oh, you got a lot of defense in hand. Got a lot of defense. Seeing the first uh, shield formation is amazing. And looks like I'm throwing out a pin the prey, which means yeah. more discards. Nice bait attack. If it gets faded, you feel silly. <laughs> oh. The work day is catching up. Oof. Mm -hmm. Oh. And there it is, it gets fainted. It did faint. Which like That is uh that is the I mean, it feels there are worse things you could faint. Mm -hmm. Like it might it feels a lot I feel like it feels a lot more silly fainting a regroup than it does <laughs> fainting a pin to prey because at least you don't lose an extra card. Mm -hmm. I think ideally if I were him there probably would have blocked with a um, battle hardened and then if it was the pin the prey you don't take any damage you just discard probably like a pack card um, and if it's a shift you kind of feel a little bit bad which I think he was kind of hedging his bets there with the the feint but yeah like you said there are there are much better things to feint in this matchup like a double attack or the archer revive uh, or yeah. like a, a jaws so Taking a pin the prey, it essentially was like he discarded the feint from it. So, we'll take those. Yes, we do like that. And now we're in the position that I like, where I'm sitting with basically almost a full hand of cards. And he's in that delicate position of, do I approach, do I not approach, and... I'm ready for him, if you look at my hand. <laughs> oh, yes. But sitting oh, on yes. that, I mean, that plus two token is a little, a little scary. What do you, what do you do there? 
with that. Do you send an archer in and just attack with a shift? Just to just to just say, all right, get get rid of your plus two token. That is a great question. I think at this point I was still playing around um, Helm because I believe I just played that as like a straight up three, um, like no no momentum, just <laughs> just a shift there, which is why I didn't win combat over that heal. I think I was so afraid of inadvertently sending a bunch of damage on Pat there um, that right now I'm still like probing because um, he does have that that plus two token that can also block a lot of damage as well. Rosie's on the on the prowl. Hi Rosie. Oh. Hi Rosie. There's a churro somewhere around here. <laughs> I think you, you'll have to explain that that's not a food item to some of the people. Uh, not in this situation, no. He's uh, he's my little my little fluff buddy. <laughs> we'll see if he makes an appearance. Oh boy, that would be very exciting. Uh, Pat looks like he's coming in. Still two Pat cards left. Never mind. He's playing the hokey pokey. Never mind, he is attacked. Oh, he turned himself around. He did. Shield formation. Uh, at this point, you you got you got to get Pat dead. <laughs> I, I I really feel like you got to get Pat dead here. And he discards another helm, which is very. That's what that's kind of like what I was afraid of with the whole like attacking Achilles. And like he had it the whole time and just chose to play something else so uh he's definitely focusing a lot on the exhaustion game especially as like i am actually a card ahead of him in deck count right now which is kind of funny um yes with more aggression because he doesn't have any currently <laughs> and then with his battle hardened he got back a skirmish and i think at this point, I was like, okay, if you're not going to block with the helm, I'm going to attack you with the double attack. Faints it, which is a little unfortunate. Big unfortunate, but Huge. but not the end of the world. You saw me eyeing that master of the hunt there. <laughs> oh, yeah. We all want it. Mm -hmm. See, I think, I think with that in hand... Knowing there's a chance that there's a faint, I, I would attack with maybe the archer. You have an archer card in hand. Uh, maybe attack with uh, with a, a skirmish because uh, if they faint it, take take the extra value. And if you know you have master of the hunt, you know you can just wham bam. Here's another double attack, and you you still have a leftover with one of your value blocks. I think I was chuckling to myself there because I ended up drawing another uh, double attack off the, <laughs> the maneuver. <laughs> so this position I, I think was pretty good. I kind of blocked myself off from Pat and said, "Hey, if you're gonna if you're gonna come attack me, you got to do it as Achilles, which also forces him off the plus two token." Um, and now Achilles is attacking Yanega, which. At this point, probably a battle hardened since he doesn't have any more handshakes. Although he looks like he's not actually going to be attacking with Achilles. And instead opts to keep Achilles on the token and have the archer attack Pat. Have Pat attack the archer. That. Yeah. So I'm, I'm playing a, a basically a blank divide and conquer here. Oh, this is where I I remember this. I was messing with my health dial because I don't know if you could see that, but I kept trying to drag the card out and it wasn't working. Um, and it was probably, was it changing the health? I think so. Which I believe, let's just skip back and make sure I ended the right health. So here, look at this. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to drag the card out. <laughs> 
Yep, there it is. I accidentally highlighted the um, the health dial. And you can see, <laughs> see it reset the dial. <laughs> that was that was so jank. Well, let's see. Do you go back? You were at 12. I believe we figure it out. I felt like an idiot right now because I was like, Hey, I was trying to drag the card out, and instead I ended up resetting my health dial. <laughs> I was just like, this guy Dude, is look, so look at the, look at the ping in the top right corner. You can totally tell. Oh yeah, I got reset. Um, and that was actually the exact interaction I wanted. I played the blank divide and conquer, uh, and Pat attacked with a uh, battle hardened. So keeps the archer alive. Go. Keeps my my body block in check. And what did he take back? He took back the other battle hardened, I believe. Okay, gonna cycle those for a minute. I like the double attack here. I really want him to play that plus two token so that I can attack him with a shift. Or not a shift, a uh, jaws, because he is on a three spot. That is true, that is true. So full block's the first one. Come on, token. There it is. Token battle hardens to full block the second one. Takes back a battle hard. <laughs> I believe that was first action. That was. do have kind of an explosive hand, but like I also would have to unload my entire clip if I wanted to do anything, so I think backing off here with a maneuver, definitely the right idea. Yes, I think that is a, a very a smart plan in that fashion. Uh, one of my favorite things to find on some maps is uh, places where you can force your opponent into a three zone with your archers. Uh, and I did actually find uh, in my in my Houdini game, I found a spot where I could do that uh, as long as he didn't have a misdirection. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that, there's a lot of uh, fun positioning things you can do with the end, for sure. I don't actually know if I was a fan of this position because I ended right next to that plus one token as yet, which if you wanted to boost around to and then attack with Achilles... He could have, but... I think that it was something you probably didn't have too much to worry about, especially with him playing Exhaustion Game. And that's just boosting one for just an extra damage. So there's a chance that uh, he'd rather just hold on to that card rather than use it to get uh, that extra little piece of damage over top. really think in this turn. Uh, I haven't really been paying attention to what the, the clock times are at, but I think they've been like roughly even. Like I don't think either of us are at risk of going to time, but as soon as I send it back over, that's gonna be something I check. Oh, Using the skirmish me. offensively. Very interesting choice by me, I will say. <laughs> His Hermes effect goes first. Let's see, where are we going with the skirmish? All right, pushing back to red green. I'm putting all the cards I'm out of over there on the right. And I think at this point, the hand counts are even, but he is taking the next turn, which means he will eventually have to approach. Mm -hmm. he'll go to six, I'll go to six, and then he'll either have to come at me or risk overdrawing. Uh, 
still couldn't see the times. We're just playing too fast. Very decisive gaming so far. <laughs> That's what we represent here at here at the happening. Decisive gaming indicated by the question mark. <laughs> yeah, uh, the question mark egg right here. Egg. Egg. I pledge allegiance to the egg. With of the happening <laughs> from Had Chowder. <laughs> I initially wanted the egg with Connor's face on it, on the jerseys. And then everyone else was like, don't put an underage boy's face on a shirt. We don't want to wear it. I that. mean, they make a fair point, but I mean, if Connor and Connor's dad sign off on it, I don't see the problem there. Or... Because he kind of is the happening. Don't quote me out of context on this. We wait till he's 18, and then it's not a problem anymore. Yeah, there we go. To put his face on. What, the we just be patient. <laughs> we're, we'll be ready for a season, season whatever. Uh, what is it? Season, season eight of the happening. <laughs> nah, he's not that far off. Well, I mean, like it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Connor! Yay! Yes, happy birthday, happy Connor! Birthday, Connor. It's always... uh, happy birthday from the uh, from the the wizard goblin. This was another error I may have made where I was just double maneuvering away and left myself next to a plus one token and he actually boosted in to attack me on this one so we'll see how oh, I... and attacking with a pat card which is I'm hoping that he's doing I think I think attack with the pat card take two damage make this a six that would uh that would be spicy Stallion. Okay, so he could actually make that a six if he wanted to. And he does. So I take three there. I think I think I would have I, I think that if he just took a second, I feel like Jaws would have been good there. Uh straight value block for the six. Or maybe not. I don't know how we feel about that one. Uh, well, I end up using the stallion charge to move, because now it's my turn. I think I've moved myself into a position to now attack. Oh, now kill okay. And, yeah, we can launch the double attack here. Looking at my hand, I do got some spicy stuff. He is on two zones right now, I believe, so Jaws is only a five. Although he only has a skirmish left as a four, everything else is a three. Looks like one Wily, one Battle Hardened, one Hermes. I feel like I really like the, the Jaws attack here because it, it's a, a good card to beat out a faint. And if they faint, they take a damage, and you don't really lose any extra stuff like you would a double attack or a surprise volley. Uh, but if they don't, it's still a five value attack, so that's pro that hits over Achilles' heel, which would give you an action. Like there, there's just, it's a strong value with that. Okay, so he kind of chumps chump blocks there, takes three. I think he was probably expecting one of those those red threes. He would only take one there, so that was actually, I would say, a good interaction to get out of that. Yeah. I think that was very, very Yen favored. Uh, he takes back another skirmish, so no more battle heart, no more looping. Um, and now five cards in hand. Hunt, hunt, five hunt. cards in deck. Come on, Taylor. Come on, Taylor. No. All right, so I end up maneuvering away here because he still has the initiative based on hand counts. I think I go there, which also sets up some decent Jaws positioning. Because unless they go all the way around top, Jaws will at least be a five. Yeah. Very good positioning with that. Yeah, just, just keep patting me on the back. 
you say something negative, you're not going to be invited back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there hasn't been very poor positioning. I, I call it how I see. I mean, Achilles has had some questionable positioning, but he's also playing very differently than I would play Achilles in this matchup. So he just double maneuvers, kind of closes the net on my positioning. Or my position, I should say. I think I'm planning about just running, <laughs> running here. Uh, but if I were me right now, I would probably run. I... It... Running, running is scary. <laughs> Staying is scary. Yes. He still has all three double attacks left, which is huge. I think he was saving those for the end game intentionally. And yes, we are both fine on time. I think we both started with like six minutes. So he's used 30 seconds of clock time and I've used almost two minutes now. <laughs> but. Oh, what are we at that? We're attacking with the Jaws. With the Jaws. I think with the Stallion in hand, I figured I could afford to run away if he tried to attack me with something on his turn. But only one feint left. There it is. Boom. He takes the damage. But now you're guaranteed a surprise volley. And a double. Yeah. And you attack with a stallion charge. I think I'm no, you're defending with this. You're defending. will have to eat the three <laughs> from the second attack, but I think I was okay with that. Yeah, I think that's a, a good play from that. Especially being able to... Uh, does one with the land give you an action? No. Okay, no. Uh, especially with the double attack, the, having a surprise volley, and especially with a, a Master of the Hunt in hand knowing that there are no feints. I mean, if you force him to defend with a skirmish, that's a six potentially later on that you won't have to deal with if it gets to that point. So this is me counting his cards. He has a helm, two skirmishes, a wily, a spear throw, a Hermes, and two double attacks left. This is eight cards. So he only has four, four blocks left. Yeah. Five, five. But two of those are skirmishes, which are potentially big attacks when he's angry. So he does still have some gas in the tank, despite Achilles is at four health though. Yes. And he doesn't he doesn't have the buff right now. Mm -mm. Although he will soon because once his deck runs out, uh, Pat bye bye Pat. Pat is at two health, which means just one one draw from an empty deck will kill Pat. An exhaustion. Yeah, but the I I don't think you want to play exhaustion here. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's also a little bit scary because. Uh, those cards that he discards, he doesn't have any more battle hardened, so he's no way to get them back. And depending on what does end up getting discarded, that could potentially be very bad for him. Love the shield formation draw here. <laughs> oh yes, it's getting that late game shield formation always feels good, especially when you're running for the. Oh, I found a churro. <laughs> Let's go. What's up, Maxine? <laughs> this is a churro. Taylor says hi. 
This is my churro. <laughs> no, that's my churro. This is our churro. <laughs> communist churro. Okay, so what's communist happening? Churro. What's I'm happening giving here? you churro. Oh, okay. <laughs> what the heck? I don't know. <laughs> I just uh, I just don't see I don't see an out for Achilles here. It, it's it's a hard one. It is a hard one. Ops to spear throw me. It, Which both are getting pretty low here. <laughs> Uh, maybe hoping for, uh, hoping to either force you away to attack, or hoping to, that you'll attack immediately for get that to get that extra wily damage. And mm -hmm. what do we do? What do we do? I think that's what I'm thinking about. I think if I were me, I maneuver away to that green red space, master the hunt, and then start attacking. But the helm is a is a viable block here, which does make things a little difficult. Because that would kind of put an attack into Pat, and at this point I would rather Pat die on his turn from exhaustion damage then on my turn that's fair that's fair i'm taking a second to think about this it's been a full minute the, the clock is not always your enemy in these games no i don't think it is i like the maneuver Attack on Achilles. Attack. What do we got? The, oh, the surprise volley. Okay, so you're probably going for the extra extra tankiness, so that if he does come in to aggress you, you have that that archer because you know that it can't be fainted. Mm -hmm. Or do you take the action and swing with that double attack? I think the skirmish changing my positioning definitely uh, affects things. But looks like he's moving over there. I wonder what would have happened if I chose to gain action there. But that does effectively heal me too, which is very powerful at this stage of the game. Oh yes. My archers will die in exhaustion too, but I can just keep them all the damage I would take before my deck empties, before I draw from an empty deck, um, so that they, I effectively like don't waste their health that I got back. Now he's thinking, his options for attacks here are Skirmish, Wily, Hermes, Double. I think I probably play point blank, and then if it's a double attack, play shield on the second. Yeah, I think that's a good play. Force the extra discard and value block. Make sure you get the damage out where you can. And we know that that last card in my deck is a. Um, point blank because I put it on the bottom earlier mm -hmm. so he actually maneuvers on his first action with a boost he wants Pat to take the uh, 
the point blank damage. Uh, so attack with Wily. Something. Although if he attacks with a double, and Pat does die, the second attack does not go through. So they did change that rule. From the initial release. This is me making sure I know all the cards in his hand. He's switching it up. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? It could be anything. It could be any any of the remaining cards he has left. They're all attack legal. This is the moment of truth. There's the double. There's the double. And now the discard. These discards could be absolutely massive here. They are going to be either way. <laughs> um, yeah, I think... Pull that double attack. <laughs> I think I'd actually rather pull blocks here. Because then I could probably just kill them. Yeah. I think uh, pulling the skirmish is, is good. I'm pretty sure he has one more of those. Uh, I think uh, taking the Hermes would also be pretty good. Oh, I think I'm trying to get him to promote me so that I can summon in a die because I don't want to do it myself. I would rather have random, uh, random chance determine it for me. Yeah, promotes me. I get the old die of truth. Good old D4. <laughs> I'm gonna make it really big. <laughs> Eat that a bunch. Three. Okay, a double attack. There's the double. And two. Will we pull the skirmish? We, uh, we pull, pull the Hermes. <laughs> not pull the skirmish, but uh, so the two cards left. He has a Wily and a skirmish. A Wily and a skirmish. And believe the second attack should not go through because Pat is dead. We might be talking about that right now. I don't know why we're having another well, combat, it. but we shouldn't be. <laughs> well, he discarded and left you without an extra archer. So sad. Yes. So yeah, definitely at this point, kind of over because I can just attack him with a double attack. He has to block one of them, otherwise he dies. You um, maneuver, master of the hunt, double <laughs> attack, and then just attack with some one, one of your purples. Mm -hmm. Yep. So and yeah. Then you just right down there. Yep. Mad positioning outside of your archer not being in your zone. <laughs> something you should something you should always practice is keeping your archer in your zone if you need it something i'm bad at <laughs> yep. well Move. there's the double attack takes three and dies. into the skirmish kaboom kaboom so yes what a what a game what are your thoughts on that Corey? I have strong opinion about keeping Pat alive. Mm -hmm. I think that you gotta, if you're gonna keep Pat alive, protect your schemes. Protect your schemes on the marble maps. They're so important. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
You kill you kill Pat off, you scheme, you get those two cards back in hand after discarding your two Patrickles cards. Or hopefully Patrickles cards. Uh and you just it sets you up so much more to just aggro out the cut. Mm-hmm. That was kind of what I was expecting, especially Achilles going first on this map. This is a very tight map. I believe it has like a a very close center. Um, which normally late game boosting is an issue for Achilles, uh, especially on the larger maps. But on this map, should pretty much be able to get almost everywhere, like with the the four boost from Helm. Um, I think when I play as Achilles in this matchup, I typically would like an early pad death as well, because Yen can't do much about the plus twos when you are swinging in full force, but. Um, might have gone a little bit differently if my opponent practiced this matchup playing as that. And like you saw, it it did come down to the wire at the end. It was very close, but... It was close. It was close. But I think... I, I Part of me, my soul, wishes that I just could have seen the interaction of a helm into Pat and Achilles swapping spots with that scheme spot. Mm-hmm. And then right out the discard, you get to uh, you get to draw two new cards, and you get to bury something strong right at the end, so you know that you have some lethal damage. I think that would have been a very very good strategy to pull out, and it's very sad to watch Helms be discarded <laughs> as well. I yes. think that hurts any Achilles player to watch the Helm get the discard. <laughs> that was something that I think I was playing around the whole game. That didn't end up actually mattering because my opponent wasn't <laughs> blocking with them, which is interesting. But uh, I got I got some spicy Yanenga combo turns in there, which is always always fun because yes. that is the the ideal way that I like to play Yanenga as like a very a very calculative but um but bursty fighter that can kind of pull off these miracle turns out of nowhere, like that scheme token into Master of the Hunt. Maneuver, scheme token, and to draw three, bury one, attack with surprise volley, gain an action, attack again. Like, yeah, and then burying, <laughs> burying one of those point blank blanks could have mattered too. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it came down to that close at the end, at least, which was at least made it really fun to watch. Uh-huh. Uh, but that that point blank being buried at the end that that could have changed a lot of things. That could have uh, definitely put the game more in your favor by burying that more than you did. Mm-hmm. So I think that was a, a fun a fun that was a very fun interactive play to watch. <laughs> was the uh, the the multi scheme? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was the first first week of team league this season. And, uh, spoiler alert, our team did not do very well this season, but we sure had fun, and that's what it's all about. Uh, Hey, I did did better than I did last time. Let's go. uh, That's progress. That is round of applause there for you, Corey. All right, well, hopefully everyone enjoyed us kind of watching that, that video back, trying to put yourself in my shoes, seeing what I would do in that situation. Um, thank you for joining me, Corey. I hope to have you back yeah. on one of these other games. I'm excited to come back. Okay. Making content with you is fun. When, when we're editing the film, we'll, we'll, we'll see how, how positive and negative you were before, uh, before sending you that invitation back. So, um, your, your <laughs> yeah, I gotta, gotta weigh the, the scales, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you did the what's up legends at the beginning. Do you want to do the, the outro as well? Oh, gosh. The only part I know is yeet. (laughs) All right. Well, then here, I'm going to point at you when you need to say the line, all right? And you better give me a good one, all right? (laughs) All right. All right. I'll give you the best one in my soul. It's going to make Max angry, but I'm going to do it. All right. Maybe don't do that, but... (laughs) No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Well, thank you so much for watching, everyone. And as always, like, subscribe, and... Yeet! Like, gobble ghoul.